So when I was growing up, I heard people saying, if, if you commit suicide, you just procured your ticket to hell. And I don't know whether there will be any other topic, any other opportunity for me just to deal with that lie that has been passed on from generation to generation. And the thoughts I'm going to give you are not my thoughts, they are biblical thoughts. There seems to me to be a transcendental difference in time between the time you're clinically dead and your eternal destiny. Let me first make a disclaimer. When you die, you either go to heaven or hell from a biblical perspective. Any other teaching is a lie. I didn't discover that. Jesus said, there was this rich man who ignored the poor man called Lazarus and both died. One is in hell and Lazarus is in heaven. To the extent Jesus even gives names of people, he's at Abraham's bosom. Anything else is a lie. You either go to heaven or hell. Of course, both of them will be finished at the end of time. And what will be the new hell will be their lake of fire. Here's the deal. Now, suicide is murder. Murderers will go to hell. Revelation 21.8. Let's go slowly here. <laughs> suicide is murder. It's self-murder. Let's make it very clear. But immediately you die. I've seen a lot of scriptures. I'll try to draw two of them. They seem to suggest the masses of God knows no bound. For instance, when they were stoning Stephen to death in Acts 8, the story begins in chapter 7, we see Stephen able to see Christ, studying, beckoning him, coming for him. And he was able to say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The man is clinically dead, so to speak. He's technically dead. He has been stoned, beyond speaking, but he's still able to make that choice. I'm going to Christ. But perhaps the most interesting story are the two these who are crucified with Christ on the cross. The writers of the gospel were able to say what these guys said, but believe me, they never heard them. One, these guys were beaten to death. Two, they were raised on the tree, very high. They couldn't even hear them, even if they mumbled with their lips. Number three, the people who wrote these scriptures had ran away, all of them. <laughs> so there's no way they heard them. So I want to believe they never even opened their mouth. Maybe they were speaking their heart, and one chose hell, and one chose Jesus. Seems like the God of the universe still gives people an opportunity to make an eternal decision. Here's the deal from a biblical perspective. <coughs> Jesus died for all sins, including suicide. That's why he warns us, do not judge. It is not your responsibility to determine where somebody's eternal destiny will be. In any case, who gave you the assignment of judging other people's lives? Eternity. You have to deal with your own salvation. Scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and troubling. Who gave you the assignment to determine where people went? I'm saying this because I had a preacher speak such words when the president was there. That they normally decide who has gone to heaven and who has gone to hell. Do you remember that? I was shocked. Very shocked. Nobody knows. The answer is this. Nobody knows. Only God knows. Even at that particular moment. The thing is this. Your current sins were once in the future. Jesus died for your past sins and your future sins. Including suicide. Caution, I wouldn't want to meet the God of all the earth immediately after committing murder.